Because no, she know. doesn't. Yeah. And she's like rocking it on her own, even though she's, you know, doing her own struggles and shit. <laughs> yeah, nah. yeah, it's luckily off. It's it's off camera. <laughs> This is why Amanda said I'm not supposed to drink <laughs> drinks in here. <laughs> ah! well, it's clear drinks. It's not going <laughs> to. <laughs> the sign says it. Uh, it's really far away. It's not my fault. <laughs> yeah, no one can read that. Come That's on. too far hey, away. See, this is why I have Zara goes in here. He's on my fucking side. You don't have to delete it, but. I mean, I don't know why you'd want to keep it. You want to use some of that? I, well, we could, well, I was like, well, it sounds like we could use everything except. Yeah, exactly. So if there's a way to salvage it without mentioning. Stuff. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Editors. Editors. Point Please. where Steve Zaragoza <laughs> talked about the times he has multiple, multiple times. He's <laughs> cut that. That's how we open this video. We could just say that <laughs> Brie S. Rig was a bad influence. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I didn't. You didn't realize we were recording blackmail, motherfucker. <laughs> That's why we got you here. Okay. Welcome to blackmail. The logo changes and it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's shit. A, it's, yeah. a, oh, wait. it's a show we're secretly recording. <laughs> I would love that. The whole podcast channel is just a front <laughs> for my actual reality show. Dude, I think that's a great idea. <laughs> I mean, you'd lose a lot of friendships, but I <laughs> but think it's a great idea. Think of the Netflix deal, yeah. though. Because, like, I mean, eventually someone would be excited about it and they'd be like, you know what? This was fun. Let's do this blackmail thing. I'm in it. What do I get out of this? Like, what What would you do? You would just corner that person on a show? <laughs> on a show. And be like, <laughs> there's so many cameras and there's no fucking doors. Yeah, there's no way I could just leave this room. I, it's actually, it's all, it's, uh, it's, and then it's just me confronting anytime <laughs> I thought you, like, fucked me over. Right, right, right. So remember, Steve, there was that time? Oh, dude, that would be great. Let's just do it. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> That's how I decide to end my career. Just, like, fucking going yeah, at everybody. Yeah. Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you had a fantastic Wednesday. Welcome back to A Conversation With. Today, we're having a conversation with Steve Zaragoza. And we're definitely not shooting this after the entire podcast was shot uh, because I forgot to do the intro. <laughs> and the, the cuts that are about to happen are not going to be very dramatic. <laughs> That's so specific. It, it almost, it's, it's weird that it's not true. <laughs> it is odd. <laughs> Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Welcome back to A Conversation With. And today, we are having a conversation with old friend of the show, also former employee, person I can no longer fire, <laughs> Steve Zaragoza. Hi, everybody. I, I mean, I could kick him out of the building. You but, could kick me out of the building. But it wouldn't yeah. change how much money is in his bank account. No, not at all. If you anything, it would probably benefit him. It could, yeah. And before we just uh, drastically cut to the conversation we were having, if you don't know Steve, uh, he, of course, uh, was one of our old school hosts on SourceFed. Uh, he's on the fantastic OG crew, uh, the Valley Folk. Uh, he's also on TV right now uh doing funny stuff <laughs> i love that it's like we literally talked about it four times yeah and I'm we like, did <laughs> it's get the funny <laughs> have a funny <laughs> funny bag <laughs> nbc's funny bags <laughs> dude uh, funny bags is a great name for a game show <laughs> we're gonna do that we're coming <laughs> up with them uh, enjoy the show. It's weird to me yeah. looking at you now. Yes. <laughs> when that was you, that was like kind of baby boy you. Although this is this is maybe a year in, maybe. That, I don't know. That might be, yeah, that might be a year in. Although I'm still wearing those fucking page boy hats, those newsy hats. <laughs> which, which I think was maybe year one. <laughs> there he is. Look at this guy. Dude, this, I'm a different boy, yeah. it's Well, it's interesting because, yeah, it's a... Uh, Thinking of how you changed, do you feel like Brie Esrig is the reason that you've changed or were there other factors? I think getting divorced was the reason why I changed. How, oh my God, Steve, it's been so long since we talked and yeah. it's been so long since that happened that I forgot yeah. you had a divorce. Yeah, dude, I was married for so long, for like nine years. But, and I know that it was stressful to go through. Yeah, it right? sucked. And a lot of it sucked. Yeah. Now on the other end of it. Dude, I, Worth it? I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think we both got to a point where. Because she's here. Blackmail. Oh, no. <laughs> Blackmail the show. <laughs> it just 
keeps going deeper. Just kidding. This isn't a blackmail show. And it's like, it just keeps happening. Uh, the guy you killed is here too. No! Oh, no. Uh, no, I mean, we just, you know, I think, man, we were just so young, dude. And it was just like, I was 25 or 26 when mm -hmm. I got married. And, and she was my high school sweetheart. So... Dude, I don't know, man. Stuff's just not meant to go on and on and on like that. People just change. Do you mean like marriage in general? Maybe. What are you fucking saying about my? <laughs> what are you saying about my life choices? <laughs> Dude, I just no. I here's the thing. It was one of those things where I love you. Yeah. It was one of those things where <laughs> everyone else realized that this oh, shouldn't sure. be happening. Yeah, yeah. And like no one wanted to tell you. <laughs> yeah. We figured. Because how had, do you say that? Yeah. You're not gonna take me into a room and go, hey, dude, <laughs> your wife kind of sucks. <laughs> we all just wanted to say really quick. And it wasn't like that she sucked or anything. It was just that like <laughs> we just were very different. And it was so no, totally. weird to see us together, probably, because I was just this wild yelling maniac and she was this quiet, kind of reserved person. And that's just like you just saw the writing on the wall on that one, right? Because you're just yeah. like Well, sometimes sometimes you're like, Yeah, maybe opposites attract. Dude, no, totally. Totally. But yeah, it just and I think it could have, but there's just it just got to a point where it was just like people fucking change, man. And mm -hmm. I was just like not ready for that. And she was ready for so many bigger things. And I was just like, I got to go do my dreams, you know, because my yeah. dreams were coming true. I was being in fucking TV shows and Taco Bell commercials and stuff. Right. Did you, didn't you do like a stint on Disney even yeah. back in the Force Fed days? Yeah, yeah dude. So it was it, like happening on multiple places. Yeah, and like Taco Bell like, you know, was courting me and there's there's just all these amazing things <laughs> happening and I just... <laughs> I remember getting so angry at you. Dude, I know. I was like, Steve. I know. Stop you. doing stuff for free. And the thing was is like, I think about that all the time because it's like, on the one hand, you were so right. Like, it was really you kind of just just looking out for me in a way and being like, and you completely disregarding <laughs> it the entire time. But look at me now, oh, dude. Oh, I just went to the resort, the Taco Bell resort. Oh shit! Listen, they invited me to the resort. Okay, the Taco Bell, the Bell, the resort in Palm Springs. They gave me a cabana. I got mm -hmm. to bring four friends. Sure, it was amazing, and that was all as a result of like kind of just not. Are they paying you now? I mean, they have for okay. for certain things. Okay, yes. <laughs> it's like I was like, you son of a bitch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I finally got like actually worked with them, and that was okay. great. And so our relationship just goes on. You so know? you're a better person than me. You will, you will actually kind of like make the relationship work. And it I was a lot of finessing. It might have been like uh, for like, anybody else, it might have been a waste of time. You're like. You're like a stripper, <laughs> a stripper that does other stuff. Yeah, yeah. You're like, yeah, yeah, I like you. This is this is great, right. but I'm really, I'm trying to also get paid. <laughs> right, exactly. Trying to also get paid. And, yeah. I'm just, and I'm just an angry prostitute. Yeah, because I mean, I wasn't going to like do it forever and then be like, wait a minute, now I'm like 10 years into this friendship with Taco Bell and I have nothing else going on and I never <laughs> asked for any money from them and now I'm a homeless man. <laughs> like, I wasn't going to do that. But I have this Taco Bell car. <laughs> yeah, I can get Taco Bell whenever I want. I just don't have a family or a home or... <laughs> I'm the most popular homeless man in yeah. all of Los Angeles. Yeah, no, I just like, so going back to like what we were talking about, I just, I feel like, you know, my ex- wife and I were on completely different like paths on yeah. our, in our lives. And it just came down to that kind of a decision that like, it's time for us to fully just go onto our own paths. And then that's kind of what led me down the, the path of being so different from that guy that you, that you showed me the gif yeah. of, you know, that guy that, that was like afraid of everything. And, um, you didn't even drink back then. Right? No. Well, wait, so can I ask that? Who, yeah. What was your first drink? My first drink was, uh, you know, I guess, I guess I could say the first, my first like full drink. Cause I'd had like sips here and there, you know, Joe, Beretta. you know, like, you know, like a kid at a birthday or at a wedding. They're <laughs> right, like, right. sure. Go ahead, here. kid. Have a sip of champagne. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean like, I think you guys were always like, here, try this. Maybe you'll like this or try this. But my first like actual drink was like Brie and I were breaking up. Oh. And we were like hanging out for the last couple of times before we were like fully done. Mm -hmm. And we had just had this particularly emotional argument slash, you know, take me back slash this mm -hmm. needs to work and that whole thing. And um, we were just like, 
you know, crying and, and hugging and trying to figure out what to do. And she was just like, do you want to just like go to the liquor store and just like get some booze and we could just like have a drink and then call it a night or whatever. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I don't think I've ever felt as emotionally exhausted and sad and all of those emotions. This is the perfect time to have a drink, right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah, we went to the liquor store and we got some drinks and I got this like, this like rosé in a can sure, like yeah, it's the yeah, girliest yeah. like <laughs> i mean you know whatever it was literally a pink like can with like bubbles and it was just like and it was, your, your eye just went to it and said that i don't know why i was just like yeah that looks refreshing at least i wanted something kind of refreshing <clears throat> and i've never found beer to be fucking refreshing because it's just like bread right like there's nothing refreshing about bread what are you talking about isn't beer just bread like yeast yeast is just <laughs> Like it's I've just never, like I've barley or way. something. I was like, I, I don't know anything about beer, but I do know, even though I don't drink it, if, <laughs> if it's like a hot summer day, I'll take a Corona. Yeah, I don't know why. Like everyone's like a thirst quench. Like, and, and I've heard people say that like, yeah, it quenches your thirst, but it's like, I don't understand why it does if it's literally just grains. You know? I don't know, man. I, it's, it's what I go to. Like if I thought, okay, I'm out there on a beach. I'm not going to get a, a mixed drink. I'm not going to do why not? something on the rocks. Like so a margarita I, or something or... <laughs> I mean, I guess, I guess I might do that. Maybe just I'll walk that back. I'm sorry. No, I, uh, but there's something, it's the only time that I'll go, yeah, I'll, I'll drink a beer. Or if I'm trying not to get super hammered, I, thanks to Joe Beretta, I started drinking, uh, IPAs yeah. and, and I was like, these are horrible. I can just <laughs> yeah. sip on this for a really long time. I don't get that, man. I've never liked beer. I still don't like beer. Even so from that moment, I've kind of just decided like, well, there's no reason why I can't have like a drink. So then, so it's like you try that, right? You drink together and then yeah. you drink the next day. No, it was just like we drank together and then we called it quits. And then we were like, I guess we're done. And then we ended our relationship. And then I went off and was like, <laughs> okay, so I'm kind of sad still. And I'm like, like not in a relationship anymore. And so now's the time to start doing stupid shit, right? Like making some mistakes and mm. kind of like going out and just being like, I have broken up with, I'm going to go do drugs in Mexico or something. I mean, you know, not that bad, but it just turned into one of those things where it was like, I'd be having lunch with the guys and they'd be like, let's get some IPAs. And I'd be like, and I'd like a cider Ooh. or something. And they were like, what, what's the, what a cider. So I guess I'm like a cider guy. I like ciders, but I don't That's like, cool. man, I, I, uh, I okay. was in. So then let me ask. Sure. Sure. So, sure. Cause I'm interested in the jumps. Okay. Some we won't talk about. Yeah. 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 We can talk. <laughs> we'll see what we can talk about. So then you jump. When do you try weed for the first time? Um, so I tried weed for the first time way back. Also, just so everyone knows, this is me kind of like catching up with a friend who is just drastically changed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, I think, and I don't I, mean that like in a bad way yeah, <laughs> like, no. and he's fucked up everything. No. I know. I just used, yeah, totally used to be a straight edge, like yeah. kind of scaredy kid. Still, 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 <laughs> <laughs> what would be an HR nightmare here, but fun. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. yeah, I do. I do see where my limits are with a lot of things. But as far as like drugs and alcohol went, I was just kind of like a very, very sober person when we met. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just kind of like, yeah, I smoke weed. And, you know, sometimes I drink and sometimes I get a little bit more, you know, test the waters a little bit. But I'm a safe so, person and but, I but feel see. safe. But so Brie pushed you to drink. Yeah, Dre, that's the way yeah, I'm gonna Brie, say it. Brie forced Just, me into alcohol and weed. Oh, so she was part of this well, as no, well. I mean, so when Brie, so before Brie, I uh was at some party and actually Peter Gilroy like handed me my <laughs> first joint. And uh, so I, he handed me a joint and he was like, just go for it, man. And I was like, all right, fuck it. I must've been in another low point <laughs> in my life. And so I did it and I felt nothing like a lot of people oh. do. Like, like, do you know people that were like, I smoked a joint and I didn't. Yeah. But I never anything. believe those people. Well, I know, yeah, I, I I mean, know there could be people like, well, that's what happened for me. I, I don't know what that is. I, I have half, half a puff and I'm just like, oh no. <laughs> like, but that's the thing. That's why when we were talking earlier, I was like, I don't do stuff when we're out yeah. because one, I never knew, know who I'm going to run into and I don't want someone to have like a bad experience and for me to <laughs> seem like an asshole. Yeah. Uh, and then two, uh, it just makes me so sleepy that I mainly just use it to go to sleep. Yeah. And I guess there's like strains that are less sleepy than others, but, <laughs> yeah. but who knows, man. And you're right. Like, it's really one of those things where it's like, I think I've gotten to a point in my smoking, uh, 
in my smoking timeline that I think I can maintain a conversation maybe. And like, I think I'm okay. Like I don't, I'm like you where I don't really like to do it in public sure. often, but if I'm like <laughs> at an, like a Halloween horror nights or something, yeah. I kind of want to be a little, you know, everyone goes to get a drink or something. So yeah. why not have like a little edible or something and just go like, let's do this. Let's get scared. And, and there's a little bit that just is of a nightmare. So because <laughs> yeah. I'll get stopped by someone and, you know, sometimes people are kind of processing, you know, maybe they've watched for a really long time processing. And so like there are moments where I'll be sober and someone kind of just like they shake your hand and they like, they hold the hand too long and they stare at you. <laughs> I would be horrified to be high in that moment. <laughs> I would think that I was doing something weird. And so that's why he was doing the thing. And I would be, I'd like start apologizing or just fucking. There, there was one time where someone approached me and someone said something and I didn't know how to respond. So I just walked away. <laughs> I think that no might've actually way. been, that might've actually been at a company party. I think with one of the, one of the researchers said something and I was like, and you just literally, <gasps> because you were too deep into Luke, a, like wait, a is Luke in the room? <laughs> oh, he's not in the room. It was Luke. Yeah, it was Luke. Yeah. Like I, he uh, came over and introduced himself to you or something? No, no, no. no. He he was in I think he was introducing his girlfriend to me because <laughs> sometimes we have like uh, company events and you can have a plus one. Sure. Uh and he introduced <laughs> introduced uh the girl he was seeing at the time. And I was like, cool. And then I just walked away because <laughs> I didn't know what to do with the conversation because yeah. my my head was just did not walking there. away feel good once you were far enough away. I mean, I like laughed I and right I was decision. like, that was weird. It was the right decision, <laughs> but then I in my head I was just like, what was that like? And I talked to him the day after, and he I he at least I, said he barely recognized. I feel like I've gotten to the point where like I th I think I can walk away from a conversation and be okay with it later. Like I used to be in a place where I'm like, I can't walk away from this. Like I would be having a full panic attack in front of someone and they'd be like, you know, talking about whatever. And I'd be like, okay, where are my exits? How do I get out of here? What do oh, I say? Wow. I got to go to the bathroom. Like I come up with a million things to say, but I think now I'm at a point where I would just be like, okay. And then just like literally walk away because what's the worst that could happen? I mean, they, they might be like, that guy's an asshole. Or they might also be like, that's so weird. And that's okay if people are like, I met Steve and he was just so weird. Because it's like, well, that's, yeah. I feel like that's your brand, though. Yeah, it is my brand. You're right. Yeah. For you, you can't get away with that shit. Yeah. You got to be like. Well, because then it would seem like everything, including this or uh, the PDS, would be like fake. I yeah. think, I think, I, th I like when people come in and they're like, oh, yeah, you just seem like you dialed it down from uh, a, a nine to a five. I'm like, right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I was like, I mainly like to just. If, if, it, if it's a group of people, I like to listen. Yeah. It was kind of the same thing when we used to do uh, the DeFranco Does events or the table talk with you and Joe. I was just like, I'll just react <laughs> to yeah. you guys because it was just fun. Yeah. Those it's were good times, time. man. Joe Which, and I reminisce all the time. About oh, really? Those times, yeah. Well, it's I think it's one of those things where especially kind of with the original four to six, it's just like you don't. Like it felt good in the moment, but it's definitely one of those things that even as I like wouldn't be in the writer's room with you guys as, as often, it just, it was so fun. Yeah. And then it turned into this other beast that I don't think that I can comment on right now. But <laughs> Is there a time, like we should just do a thing where we just all get into a room with cameras and if we want it to go out, it can, but we could just all, we're all past these, this time where we can't, we can finally talk I did, about I did, this stuff. I did, yeah. But if, if I talk about it, I want it to be at a point where my career could just implode. And, right, and right. And it would be okay. Yeah, it'd be fine. I'd be like, <laughs> well, I'll just get off Twitter then. It'll be fine. <laughs> right, right. I uh but okay, so wait. So from SourceFed to kind of the point now. Yeah. What have you uh what have you been doing? Because you kinda it feel, felt like you freelanced for a little bit yeah. before you guys came back as the Valley Folk. But yeah, walk us through that. Yeah. So SourceFed, when SourceFed so I'd hit a part-time position once I got to like once SourceFed was almost done. I'd say like just before the year, mm -hmm. the year before it it ended. I had I had gone part time to go do this like Comic Con HQ show and I That's right. Yeah. yeah that. that was so fun. I got to work with Kevin Pereira and Anthony Carboni and Trisha were on another show mm -hmm. and we were all uh in the same studio. So that was kind of like a fun time. And that was uh that was funded by Comic Con, right? So yeah, it was, like it was crazy um, money thrown at it. I wanna say it was Lions Gate. Oh, Which okay. one's the one that's like that was nerdist? It's like Lions Gate. I think it is Lions Gate. It might be. It was like Lions Gate and Comic Con came together and then they yeah, so it was like mm -hmm. and Comic Con had like a whole thing <clears> that I probably can't talk about either. But uh but anyway, so digress. <laughs> Are you talking about the paywall thing? 
or no, no they never- just yeah there was a paywall thing which never works i think i don't know maybe it works now and it works better now than it did then i guess well it's hard because it's like you want to get traction on something yeah but man. how do you do that if you can't release a good number of stuff because you don't know what's gonna hit yeah yeah and plus it was like so similar to things that were already being done like way better elsewhere mm. <laughs> it was like am i gonna pay for it because <laughs> this guy's doing it or am i gonna watch it for free over here where they're amazing and i love them you know and so it was kind of one of those things but as soon as source fed had like fully ended Mm -hmm. i was kind of at a point in my life where i wasn't like broke and needed to like go Mm -hmm. into the minefields or whatever or or like the coal mines (laughs) or whatever minefields too (laughs) hey Jobs I've been working job. the minefields all day. <laughs> <Jobs> but <laughs> but uh, job, yeah, job is a job. And that's a great job. I respect those people that go out in those minefields every day. But uh, <laughs> after everything we talk about, and I respect those people, <laughs> unless something questionable was they they did something questionable in which case <sighs> listen the mfwa the minefield workers association <laughs> oh is a, i fully stand behind them i uh no i there was a there was a big like open door for me that was basically just like do you want to like take a little break and mm-hmm. decompress and and reflect on what source fed was and and what's next and and you know maybe get back into the auditioning game and like there was just all this opportunity ahead of me and and i had a really a lucky opportunity to kind of like take a little break, I guess. But during that time I did like Disney channel shows and, and um, you know, little things here and there and, and built some new relationships and such. And then, yeah. And then eventually fucking, you know, I mean, actually, I don't know how much I can talk about this, but there were talks about original hosts kind of like rebooting source fed. Oh, with the original company? Yeah, with the original company. And there was kind of some talks about that and that felt not right and kind of. Well, at that point it'd become this other thing where it was like people were associating it with people that I think weren't initially thought of for the brand or could have been used elsewhere. Yeah. um, I think to like a, a, a greater place, but yeah, it would have been, I think odd at that point. And I feel like, yeah. I don't know. I feel like you guys probably made the right decision. Then. Yeah. I mean, it was a tough decision <clears throat> to make at one point though, because some of the, you know, the opportunities were looking kind of nice, but, mm-hmm. but it was literally just kind of like jumping back into where you would, you, you had just like spent your last six years or whatever. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, and most importantly, without any piece of ownership at all at that point too. So it was very much like, okay, so clearly there's a want for us to do this. And people are constantly asking for us to like start up some kind of new thing with the, with the old group and stuff like that. And so, you know, with those small talks of us, like potentially rebooting source fed, the the original four of us lee joe and elliot and myself were kind of meeting regularly semi-regularly to talk about the logistics of what it would be like for us to start mm. our own thing <clears throat> and um you know just it and actually it was elliot that was more kind of pushing it than anybody initially really? yeah yeah i mean he was just like we got to do this we had this magical thing together and and of course that sparked my like curious side because my whole thing was you're right, dude. I mean, those times were like crazy fun. Like mm-hmm. we were just traveling all over the place and we were like hanging out in that l- little office space. But, uh, you know, <laughs> thinking back on those days, it was just, you know, obviously we have a lot of good memories and our dynamic and our chemistry was just so different and electric and all those positive buzzwords. But I'm so glad you guys went through it because I, I, I don't think I've talked about it publicly, but I know we met about it of like, yeah, oh yeah. Sh- should we like, does it make sense for me to invest and help in that way? And the more that I talked with you guys there and the more that I especially talked with Joe, I was just like, I don't know how, like, I think I would just be kind of like a burden. Like it would be, cause it'd be, cause it was like, it was one of those things where it was like, sure, I'll promote to it. But I, I knew that I would promote to you guys anyway. Right. Right. Yeah. Cause it was just like, I, I was excited to see what you guys were yeah. making as well. So yeah, I'm glad that you guys did it and that it was definitely such a, like a big success it as just far as like, out of the gate. Yeah, yeah. Which I think shows that it ultimately always comes back to talent. Yeah, right? I or guess like it the, did. The, the yeah. People. But so, okay. And then you guys started making videos there. Yeah. Yeah. And we just started like seeing what worked and the audience was really receptive. They loved it. They loved everything we were doing. And then and the next you, thing we know, yeah. you know, well, now you're on a TV show. Yeah, yeah. The Valley folk has been featured on NBC's bring the funny 
which is a, a reality competition sort of, I mean, reality is kind of the loose term, I guess, because there isn't much like, they're not doing like the uh, backstage stresses and kind of like arguments and shit. Because there really wasn't, you know, because it's just a bunch of neurotic comedians that are like, are we good enough? Okay, because I was going to ask, because I was like, I've only watched your guys' sketches yeah. on it, uh, which have been awesome. Thanks, man. Uh, but yeah, I didn't know if they did like the other stuff because when I think of reality talent competition, I automatically think back to old school American Idol because then I kind of just stopped watching like <laughs> right. competition shows. And it was always like, this person has a talent, but also here's here's Steve Zaragoza's horror, right, horrible right. background <laughs> story. Here's He was hit by a bus on the way here. <laughs> And he, right. and he was able to overcome it. And his whole family was on the bus and they were hurt too. <laughs> yeah, no, they, they, I'm glad they didn't do that because sure. I mean, even though I'm sure there, I mean, and there was like, we had the, uh, a two hour phone call before the show, like we, like months before the show started where they were like, let's just talk about your lives. Like tell us individually every single kind of bullet point of your life. And it, it was just like, okay. Uh, and so we, I guess it was just for the possibility that they were going to do that kind of reality sure. show stuff, but I'm glad they didn't because it focuses more on kind of the performances and the, and the performers and such. But, uh, yeah, man, it's been, it's been a trip. It's been really crazy. And the audience is so excited. And we put these like little Easter eggs in the sketches and, and oh. like, like the robot doctor sketch was like a bit that Mike and I came up with on dynamic banter and, um, Joe's, Tr uh, mole people sketch was uh, originally going to be like a Smosh live sketch with like oh, the wow. Smosh people. And he wrote it with, um, I, I want to say Luke Baratz, maybe one of the, someone, someone like I that. Mean, that. I mean, that wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah. Like, right. Yeah. I know exactly. Since they, they made so many funny things way back in the day too, but yeah, man, it's just like, it's crazy that we, we got together with the idea that maybe people would want to watch us do shit again. And then suddenly we're like, you know, we got our crowdfunded Patreon thing and everyone's so awesome. And we have this, like these, I just went to D 23 and like oh, yeah. a couple of people came up to me and they're like, we're patrons and we love you. And they're wearing Valley folk shirts. And I'm like, this is, this is crazy. It's working. I don't know. It's working <laughs> somehow. You know, and we're just being ourselves and that's, that's kind of a testament to all that, I guess, is so we're I guess, just kind of, so I guess the question there, right. Cause you kind of walked us through it. Yeah. What's, uh, what's next? Cause the show is still happening. Yeah. The show's happening and we are performing again on whenever this goes up, it's Tuesday, I guess the 30th or something, or I can't oh, remember um, what day it's like literally Tuesday, like Tuesday is the next performance we, okay. So this, this goes up next one. Well, today but Wednesday, <laughs> right. Yeah. right okay so anyway but yeah we're going up again and we'll see what happens and um that's a whole exciting what is the winner thing. of that show get two hundred and fifty thousand dollars awesome and yeah it's not like and you get like a, a residency or something yeah no i mean i think there's like talks of like a um you get just Fox for laughs number <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You get to, you get to go live on Jeff Foxworthy's farm <laughs> and tend to his pigs and horses. No, he, uh, there's like a just for laughs thing. Like, I think you, you would go on like a comedy tour mm. after that, which is kind of cool, which is also kind of scary for us because <clears throat> we're not really prepared for a comedy tour, but I guess we could, you know, because <laughs> we, I guess if we had, to. I mean, we did like, we've Ugh. done like a couple of shows. We did like a show at the bell house in, in New York and we did, uh, something in Arizona, but, and it was mostly just us doing like, like I did a song, Elliot did some stand up, Lee did like an improv -y kind of like character thing. Mm -hmm. And then Joe came out and did some dancing and then we did like a Q and A. <laughs> and essentially that's what a live Valley folk show is. Okay. So I think we could manage it. Yeah. It would just be crazy, but, but you know, we're jumping ahead, but we don't also, know. We don't know. But okay. So what about you though? Well, I mean, dude, I, you know, I love what we're doing with the Valley folk. And it's like, you know, I don't know if I ever saw myself as a 37 year old man, like doing like <laughs> comedy sketches on YouTube. And you know, it, it is like a, it's a different kind of dream fulfillment because it is still like entertaining, which is what I've always wanted to do. So I guess as long as I'm in the realm of entertainment and it's working, I'm kind of like fulfilled with where I'm at. But there's also a world where if someone wanted to hit me up and be like, we're looking for like a funny neighbor in a sitcom, or we're looking for like the stoned pizza delivery guy in a, in this like movie, 
you know, that's always something that I hope kind of en- ends up happening eventually. But with owning the Valley Folk with three other people, it's very much like this is our life. You know, we are sure. building the Valley Folk and we are building that brand and we're doing our best to see what happens after this TV thing. And, you know, maybe we expand, maybe we hire a younger generation of comedians to like, you know, do what we're doing now. And we kind of step behind the scenes a little bit. And, mm. you know, maybe we talk to other creators and talk about partnerships or that's that's interesting Think, yeah. thinking of the valley folk in the sense of like obviously it's different but and this is with my limited knowledge of but like the groundlings or yeah. like some other organization yeah. that'd be really interesting because yeah. i mean i think there's probably a lot of especially with like people understanding how you can kind of blow up that there's a whole wave that would be fascinating i love yeah, to see you guys I mean, and be no like the kind of gatekeepers or gate openers yeah I guess. right i mean and and there's always going to be funny people and there's a new funny yeah. person born every day essentially right or hundreds born every day and and la is like the hub as well as new york i guess but la is one of the hubs of comedy and entertainment and it's you know hollywood and all that and so it wouldn't be too difficult to kind of like you know curate a new generation of comedian slash sketch comedy yeah, people. Man, I'd love to see that because it's like you guys already have the the presence online. Uh I would argue that all of you were would you say that everyone in the Valley Folk is top notch at improv? Um, I know I know Elliot's kind of more organized. Yeah, Elliot's the Elliot doesn't prefer it, but, <laughs> he, but he'll go along with it. You know, because I mean you do. If he gets you he goes into a room for an hour and he writes something and then he goes and performs it and it's like beautiful. It's Chef's mm-hmm. Kiss. You know, it's it's really good shit. He's an excellent writer. Um, you know, maybe, maybe not as strong in the improvisational area. <laughs> like, he's here right now. Welcome <laughs> oh, to blackmail. No, black no, but he's, you know, he's just as important of a part of our, of our dynamic as anybody else is. And, uh, it is, it's, you know, it, it almost works out to, to, a, like, you know, cause we are it, Joe and Lee and I are like, we're constantly doing improvis- mm. uh, improvisational bits all day. And it's like to other people's misery. <laughs> And, and Elliot has that dynamic of like, you know, he doesn't like almost like he doesn't want to be there for it, you know, and that's a dynamic (laughs) that's so fun and important because there is an audience out there that looks at that and they're like, I don't want to be improvising shit. I want to be like Elliot. I want to be like, hold on a second, guys. Let me talk about this. Like really, really amazing thing. I I just want to point out that Steve's there. It's Joe Beretta. Yeah. Bring Joe on. All right. Here we go. Hi, Joe. You're on Phil's podcast. (laughs) Hey, hi, Phil. How are you? I'm so great, Joe. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> a special hey, uh, guest. You, uh, you suck at fantasy. Gotcha. <laughs> oh no! I can't uh, believe the guy that loses every year just got me. <laughs> hey, I am either the first, second, third, or fourth loser. But this last <laughs> year, I was the like the tenth loser. Don't worry. I, I, I believe in you this year. It's going to be great. Dude, I got a. I got a B minus in my draft and it still said I was going to finish fourth in the league. So AI, I believe in you. I, I look forward to your. Steve there goes ahead. No idea what's being said. I'm just hearing clown music playing my, like carnival <laughs> music. In my head. None of this uh, makes sense. Um, hey Steve, did you pick up music for the thing that we have to do that we have to do? Oh wow. Now I'm getting work. No, no, but I will. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Phil, make Steve do his job. <laughs> okay, you got it. Okay. Do you remember that, you remember that Phil? I can't. That? The reception's so bad, Joe. I don't. I can't hear you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Beretta. Joe Beretta, everybody. Yeah, uh, you know, it's busy. We're busy boys. We're busy <laughs> all the time, and it's very hard because I just want to like. I just want to be in front of the camera, like turn the camera on and throw me in Dude, there. Dude, if you guys, I would love if you guys just got like 500 square feet of something. And I mean, you could do your podcast there. You yeah. could do like, you could do like a mini comedy focused version of what uh, Casey did in New York with yeah. three, six, eight. Yeah. And it's like the Valley folk. I would fucking yeah. love that, man. Well, I mean, it's, it's all Joe on the would table. obviously lead it because he's the only adult mm-hmm. there. And he's um, a good teacher. And he's, <laughs> And he has children, so he has that kind of thing going for him. I remember when you guys told me that the Valley Folk was a thing, and I was like, okay, so Joe's 
<laughs> Joe is pushing everything through. Yeah. And you know, we, Joe actually hit like a real serious bout. His wife got mm. incredibly ill and, and needed to go to the hospital. And it's been like such a really tough time for everybody because, you know, we don't want to see Joe's family go through that. And we love Heather and we want her to be okay. But she went, or so Joe went on basically like a medical leave, you mm. know, right after we had shot all this bring the funny stuff. And so we went back to the office without Joe and we were like, okay, dad's not here. What do we do? Yeah. And you know, I think we, it was a really scary time for everybody. And we, we really like, we, we, we picked up the slack and we were able to kind of do it. And I think it's like, it made me feel less scared about running a business with like, you know, it, we have two employees mm -hmm. that are editors, producers with us and, and they're amazing and they're excellent and we don't want to let them down and we don't want them to be like, to see these man children trying to like make this thing work, you know? Um, but we were actually able to pick up the slack, believe it or not, with Joe kind of out doing his thing. And then Joe came back and we hit the ground running and and Heather's better and, you know, things are going great. So it's kind of we're in this like calm zone where we don't know what will happen as a result of Bring the Funny. We don't know what sure. will happen at all with Bring the Funny. And we just want to keep making funny stuff. And, and the audience has been really supportive of that. Have you noticed any... Because obviously it's a different medium. Have you noticed any specific growth from it or people recognizing you that normally wouldn't? You know, I get I haven't specifically, but Elliot said and Lee said that they were like particularly pointed out about being on the TV show. And they were like, oh, you were on a TV show. I guess it's like you can't really tell it's us in the first one because we're all covered <laughs> in dirt and shit. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't know. As far as like audience growth or kind of like grabbing that TV viewing audience, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to have spiked much. No. Okay. Because I feel like, yeah, I feel like it's one of those things that it, it potentially gets you in front of uh, an older person in a position of power that potentially opens up possibilities, right? right? right. Rather than kind of like your in general viewer base, which I imagine in my head is like, similar in age to mine of 18 to 35 although yeah. i don't know if it skews younger for you guys um no i think they grew they they actually grew up with us from the source fed because it's been so long yeah yeah and these kids that were like i was in third grade and i was watching source fed and i was like don't do that <laughs> that was that's not <laughs> the, the shows that we we drank bleach on screen and we were just God. you know we we i guess we weren't super ready for the amount of died? eyes that we're going to be watching these like idiots kind of do news things on a, on their, uh, internet screens, but they've, they've grown up some of, you know, they're like, there was a fan that I met at D 23 and he's like, I'm getting my masters and whatever. And I'm going to college and I watched you guys when I was in third grade or whatever. And it's like, this is great. These, this audience has grown up now. And so yeah. they'll get all of our weird shit. Now we don't have to be as, we don't have to censor ourselves as much. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Not like we did really back then. Anyway, just keep making inside jokes for like the next 10 years. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, work the out coffee great. machine. <laughs> Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, he did it. He did. It. <laughs> I wonder like, like five years after, how do you explain that shirt? Dude, there's no way. There's no way. It's there just was like, a show. It was just like new show. And, and then one day there was a sound <laughs> and one of them said, what is that? A coffee machine? Isn't that hilarious? And I like what like, when, when I think back to source fed it, it part of the channel just didn't make sense because it was like, <laughs> okay, so here's quick bits on news. And then also here's this 15 to 20 minute show that we do daily <laughs> right. where we just are being the weirdest versions right. of ourselves. And then here's a guy out on the street doing <laughs> trivia and throwing money at people. <laughs> oh, you're talking, you're talking about early, early source fed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was the like, throw it at the wall and see if it sticks days. of oh, source Jesus. Fed. Yeah. That was like, it was a big part of it was just figuring out what worked. Yeah. Because I remember Joe, yeah. Joe Barreto was really excited about covering sports. Yeah. And when we were flying high, it, sports were the only kind of video that tanked. It was <laughs> like everyone right. else was pulling like half a million, 400,000. He ca talked about football. I got 90,000 views. Is it no. because back then football, like sports fans weren't like looking for content on it's YouTube? Just not, or? It's just not our audience. Like when, when we start, when he's, when Beretta was talking about fantasy football in my head, I was yeah. just like jokingly, like seeing people click off because <laughs> right. anytime I talk about, uh, any kind of actual sport or fantasy, whatever, or sometimes even video games, people just like, I don't fucking care. Yeah. Why, what you, what you, don't, I don't know. 
But like, why aren't the people that want to hear that going like, oh, who, who's this? Like, why aren't they like, you know, it's I such think they a, probably just have places that are dedicated yeah. for it rather than what's happening pop culture. The only time we talk about sports on the, the show is if there's like a social element of some sort. Right, right. Otherwise, stay in your lane, DeFranco. Did you have, uh, looking back to SourceFed, did you have a certain kind of story that you would focus on? Because I know that Joe really likes space stuff and we'd let him do that. Every yeah. Time. Yeah. I really liked the the bizarre stuff and kind of like the I mean, obviously, anytime there was like movie news that was worth talking about, we kind of remember we were we would do a lot of like nerdy stuff. And then we were just like, well, let's just do a nerd channel then because there's a lot of nerdy stuff and people like it. But before we did that, it was like you know, Michael Bay is doing a Turtles movie. And that was like, oh yeah, I could write for days about this shit, you know? Yeah. I guess I loved, yeah, I loved so doing the movie stuff. stuff. Yeah. I, I will say I do miss midnight movie reviews. That was, oh man. I mean, I hated how tired I was the next day because I'd actually have to work, but oh, it was so fun. Dude, I think about how it was like, it was totally me making you do a midnight thing because my nine to five job wasn't like gonna let me come and do like a two hour chunk in the morning. And plus I was in Culver City. Wait, were you still working for the other place? Back yeah, then? I was at Sony oh. way back. That's why we had to do the midnight movies. Cause it was like, oh. I can't, I can't come out. And it was like, it was really like a tough time <laughs> because it was like 12 hour days at Sony. And then it was like straight to wherever we were going, like close to home for us to do the movie review thing. And then we would, dude, we would see these movies at midnight and then we would be in the office until like 2.30 in the morning or something. That makes me kind of interested. What, what Was there a specific moment where you realized like going from part-time to full-time that you wanted to completely, because really what it was, it's completely abandoning an old normal life for this weird thing. Dude, it was scary, man. I mean, what, was there something that pushed you or? It was yeah, leap, yeah. But. I mean, totally the want <laughs> and need to be in entertainment. <laughs> that, was, that was a way larger <laughs> cough than I expected. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phil's turning into a werewolf. Uh, no, it was just like, you know, the want and need to entertain, you know? Like I was in that cubicle at Sony and and like I would come in with my accordion and, and walk down the aisles and play the accordion for people. And everyone would be like, why are you here? Go be on TV. And, and you know. <laughs> I imagine you're like a teacher at school, but you're in a cloud outfit. Yeah, yeah. Like, it doesn't feel like you should be here. <laughs> I, and I really do believe they kept me there for morale for a lot of it, a lot of <laughs> more than anything, sure. because I don't know if I, if I did really well there, but, but yeah, I mean, once the opportunity came to like do that for full time, cause you guys were like, come, come be here, like mm -hmm. come be in the five stories a day. And, and then <laughs> what a fucking horrible idea. <laughs> SourceFed made no, we, I completely sold YouTube a completely different show than what it ended up being. But we were also one of the only people to like do something with and the money. And it worked. Yeah. yeah and it actually it, made it through that. Yeah. Cause it was, I, initially it was called 20 minutes or less. Yeah, that's right. And then they told us how many views they needed us to get. And I said, no, this is not going to work. not possible. Yeah. Well, let's take that show and just split it into five different <laughs> yeah, videos. Yeah, yeah. And then those poor two editors. <laughs> I know, man. Those early editors were like. They were just thrown into the fire. Yeah, they were. They were in the minefields. With, <laughs> with, with Hafner just looking over old producer Hafner. On the perch, yeah, with his with his. <laughs> He's like, we need it now. <laughs> we need it now. Do it. But listen, man, it worked. And, it, and I don't think we would have gotten through where we got through if it wasn't for that hustle and shit. And so, and that hustle looked kind of scary to me from, from my cushy desk job in, in Culver city. Yeah. But, but it was like, you guys were having so much fun. And I remember there was like one video that came up while I was still part-time at Sony. And, and it was like, you guys all doing, um, the like American gladiators, like stuff in the office <laughs> with the big, like no, nothing on that channel made sense. <laughs> I know. Why were we doing that? We did, shit? we did news. We did. A, yeah. We like uh, to celebrate something, something who knows. We, yeah. We, every, everyone. There's like a, I think the, the, it's, um, Oh, fuck what is it It was like someone's birthday or like we got through the week of videos somehow or... will i think was an intern at yeah, the time yes he was and he was yeah, an american gladiator <laughs> yeah will is probably the weirdest come up oh dude like his, he worked his... for me source fed zay frank, zay frank yeah uh good mythical morning yeah now. like how do you dude how do you, you have to, to get him on here different I don't know. Do you think he's kind of uncontainable and he's and he's he's a little firecracker, but I think he's more subdued now. You'd be able to get something out of him. Maybe. I don't know. He's a uh, you could have me behind him, like getting ready to spray him with a water bottle. Like, <laughs> <if> he, <laughs> well, no, 
no. Like <laughs> I just don't know what version of him I would get. That's the only thing. Because I've seen several versions of Will. Yeah. And some of those versions do not like me. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a firecracker, man. He doesn't I don't think he he's just trying to figure his shit out. And it's it's strange to watch it happen. It was one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> it feels weird because he's not here. Yeah, I know. I, I, uh, but it, it, there was, I, there was. Remember this moment where there was, there was something at the old company where someone had an issue with how how he was talking to them, <laughs> right. and then I was, and and which is, it's like a thing that constantly happens no matter where I work because everyone treats me different than they treat everyone else, <laughs> yeah. obviously. Um, and I was just like, I, I was like, I want to like take you under my wing, yeah, but I feel like you will kill me one day. <laughs> Like I'm gonna give you everything that's in my head, uh-huh. and then like you're gonna fucking you're gonna yeah Anakin me. Yeah, <laughs> will will like to be able to like he liked to go up to you at a party and be like, hey man, can I have like two hundred bucks? <laughs> like he would just be like, that's the will, that's the will I know. That he's not afraid to like say what's on his mind, but that's the scariest thing about him because you're just like, I mean, he's a hyper creative dude. Oh yeah, hyper creative, and, but- and is constantly ideas, and he's got all these huge. He's like working on nine things at once at all mm-hmm. times. And he's just like this really hardworking kid. But it'd be interesting to see you guys talk here if that ever happened, if that could happen. Maybe. Because he's because, like, yeah, his journey's crazy, dude. His is his is crazier than mine. Mine yeah. was just like I was just kind of a little quiet kid, fat kid. And then I became like a loud fat kid. <laughs> and then I became a loud, not so fat kid. And then <laughs> all that shit. So I'm trying to think when you were first hired, what year was that? I guess it was 2011 or 12. Maybe. Wow. It's been a minute. Yeah. So do you still like, let's say a video goes, <laughs> goes big. Let's Ethan Klein makes fun of a gazebo uh-huh. <laughs> and you guys react, uh, respond to it in a, in a hilarious way. It blows up. Do you guys still feel, do you personally still feel the highs? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I was like, cause I don't. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. And I know I shouldn't because it's no, I think it's good that you, that means like, no, you're right. It's not wasted on you. True. True. I mean, it gets, it's just, there is certain types of content that like, I find a little bit, you know, more despicable than other pieces of content. Wait, like, what do you mean? Well, you know, like playing the YouTube game where you do like, kind of mm. like the humiliating stuff. And then you do the, like, the like, we're going to do a challenge. And you know, that, that kind of stuff is like, it's less stimulating for me. So okay. if something like that really blows up, it kind of bums me out a little bit. Cause it's like, I don't want, I, I don't want to make that stuff, but are you, tra- are you talking about trivia bidet? I mean, no trivia bidet is like great because <laughs> it's, it's poop stuff. And I've always loved poop stuff. <laughs> and it's like, we're spraying people directly in their butt. So it's, it, is it really real? Oh yeah, dude. You have it's to real. have the most comfortable people. Dude, I mean, it's, I'm I, surprised who comes in and does it. I honestly. want you guys to win this show just so you can have Jeff Foxworthy <laughs> and Chrissy Teigen <laughs> on Trivia Bidet. Dude, Chrissy would do it, I think. Chrissy would do it. Jeff might be a little bit afraid. I don't think Keenan would do it. <laughs> He'd like, be like, you guys are insane. I'm not doing this shit. <laughs> No, no, no. He doesn't see. That's the thing. He doesn't have to do that. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, yeah, it's weird, man. We get people that Just are so like, you know, we're going to cut that and then, and then we're going to send that into TMZ and it's gonna be like, Steve Zaragoza says Chrissy Teigen needs <laughs> trivia bidet. <laughs> that's how we make the news now. We just, that's why I made the podcast. Hey, listen, man, I get it. And I respect the hustle. I do. <laughs> how do we get you on trivia bidet, Phil? Would you ever do that? I don't know. It's really like, it's like. It's you, very intimate. Yeah, dude. You're like right there. We give you like, it's very classily done. We give you like a blanket <laughs> and you get like this thing. Wait, that can, covers you, can, you, can, you, can you walk people through what this show is? Yeah. So Trivia Bidet is a show that Joe Beretta came up with where. Already putting the blame on someone. I, yeah, yeah. This is forever. I will say it's Joe's, not just because it's a brilliant idea, but because he, he deserves the credit for it. <laughs> and if someone thinks it's gross, it's on Joe and not me. Yeah. Uh, but I love to joke. Joe uh, gets so uh, hurt about because internally I talk about how despicable the show is, how it's just gross and perverse. And it's like we're asking our friends to come sit naked <laughs> on camera where we are standing inches away from their genitals and we're spraying them in the butt with a bidet and it's like when you really break it down like that, it's gross and weird, but people love it and it's Rhett Link came in and did it. Oh yeah, dude. And like Gus Johnson's done it. And we had like Brie Esrig did it. And my girlfriend, Alana did it. 
And uh, yeah, the only people that are surprising are Rhett and Link. I know, that. right? Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, Brie would do that. And uh, <laughs> who else? Sarah Whittle from Smosh did it. Okay. Um, we've And then we've got like, a, I mean, we've had a lot of people do it, but it's surprisingly people are willing to do it and want to want to do it. But essentially you just, you sit on a toilet in a room with a cameraman and a camera in your face and Joe is sitting right, standing like right next to you or Lee or whoever's there and you are asked a series of questions and if you get them wrong the bidet dial is is uh dialed all the way to 11 essentially and here's the thing if you've ever felt a bidet yes I'm talking to the audience now <laughs> if you've ever felt a bidet you don't you still don't know what the trivia bidet bidet feels like oh it's like broken elliot put it together <laughs> in the office and it's like the pressure's too high so it's like <laughs> it's like not okay it's not okay it's, it's a little assaulty it is a little assaulty you signed up for it yeah but you still didn't know like i wouldn't be surprised if someone came like months down the road and was like i was very uncomfortable <laughs> what i did <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like joe made it joe it's joe's show you, know I have, you to have to have at least one person on the show where you turn it one time and they have like as a bit spit out water <laughs> It has to. <laughs> How did we not think of that? It feels like that's it. the most Muppet showy <laughs> thing you could possibly do. And I don't know why we haven't done that. yet. I figured you would have done it. Wow, Phil. Well, we're going to do it. And Thank I will you. I will text you. I'll say we did it. We Phil. did it. And then I'll and I'll text back. Everyone knows you're everyone. High. Knows you're high. <laughs> Phil likes to text me that when he sees me on some kind of stream or something A or stream or whatever. Especially because I used to just, I, when we work together. I would whisper it in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I think there were a couple of DeFranco does's where we came out on stage and I gave you a hug and you came in and you were like, everyone knows you're high. <laughs> Why is this happening? You shit. I was just always hoping that he was just right at that paranoia <laughs> level, just to see what would happen. Because you could just ro you roll with everything, though. Yeah, I try my best. So wait, with trivia bidet, has anyone ever has anyone ever actually said no? Um, Lee will not do it. Lee has refused. Yeah, I don't know if this is a public public knowledge, but Lee. I don't will think anyone's not. gonna hold getting blasted in the That's butthole the with water yeah. against anybody. Yeah, they're like, oh. Sh not fun. Yeah, like we asked Trisha and she was like, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we asked Raina and I think Raina said she was down, but she was a little nervous about it. And then when that happens, you're like, okay, we're you not gonna push, push it. it. Yeah. We're, that's that, you know, we don't wanna force anyone to do anything they don't wanna do. But yeah, man, it's real gross and weird. We just shot another one the other day and we had some, uh, some other Smosh people in. But you have the, <gasps> it's like, it's the, carpool karaoke of butts yeah yeah well we were talking about a portable version where we could like take a big porta potty and like retrofit retrofit it with a bidet inside of it and then you could just take that to someone's studio and oh, be well, like we brought trivia bidet to you well i'm i would <laughs> i feel like I've, what okay really fast i think if you i think if you <laughs> i think if you got a porta potty and you did it with people on the street at the very least you're getting a true tv show <laughs> That's happening. Yeah, we're going to get a meeting from True TV because we want to do Trivia of a Day on the streets. I think, oh my God, come on. You think that's a good idea? You think they'd like that? Right outside the Chinese theater. Right? And we just get normal people in there? Yes. <laughs> Fallon will fucking steal that two weeks later. <laughs> or not Fallon, Kimmel. Kimmel, yeah. He does oh, yeah. Bits. Yes, yes, they will. I Maybe Fallon, too. I don't know. That's actually not a bad idea. I mean, you'd... You should super talk to a lawyer first, <laughs> but yeah, I think, I think it's could, really good. I think if we could do it where we're not actually in the bidet or inside the porta potty, no, no, no. it's like there's like, cameras in there, it'd be like a camera pointing at them. Right? Maybe you'd be talking to them through like, like an a iPad. speaker, maybe or yeah, yeah, yeah. An iPad's good, and yeah, or like a headset. Like you put on the headset. <laughs> yeah, this is good. I like this. But this you know, you're gonna have some people going in and just getting the answers wrong on purpose. <laughs> Because like, they're just trying to clean up. Or what if there's <laughs> someone going in there to just use the bathroom? I would love that to just get a series of them that are just like, you have entered a game show. If you'd like to continue, it's like, oh shit. Dude, yeah, it's like it's like what they used to, I think, fake on Cash Cab. You think <laughs> oh, you're going right, into right, a normal right, porta potty. Right. <laughs> Dude, that's actually, you, you've <laughs> unwillingly entered into trivia of a day. That's very funny. Dude, that's actually really good. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I'm into that. So what I've realized is the Valley folk needs me. 
Yeah, dude, we do, we it. totally need you. But Let's I don't just, need you. Dude, ah, we'll bring you in for like four hours. We'll have like a jam sesh. We'll buy you lunch. You know, we'll supply the white claws or whatever it is that you drink. <laughs> the, 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 I feel like that's. I feel like there's an assumption being happened. I've only. I've, I've recently only started. I I had my first white claw three weeks ago because I keep. I kept seeing uh, Nade Shot, who's a gaming YouTuber, and Ryan Wyatt, who's the head of YouTube. Gaming, oh yeah, yeah. Just always like. Yeah. Yeah. White claw, white claw. Well, I don't know why it's such so, a huge thing now. I don't know. I feel like half of it is driven by TikTok these days. It, it just, must be. Because yeah. there's like all these like white claw memes. Yeah. People yeah. Are just dicking around. But white claw loves it. Right. Because they're just like everyone's talking about white claw. So now everyone wants it. Yeah. The weirdest things get like white claw memed. Peppa the Pig. Oh, yeah. Themed. Yeah. But I think it's probably got to be good for business. I guess so. But who's profiting from the Peppa the Pig thing? The people that make it. Who the, the hell even are they? <laughs> Is it know. Nickelodeon or something? I don't know. Okay. I got to ask you a question. Sure. Uh, I think that you made this one with Falzone, but it was a different one. The last Cloverfield movie. Yeah, dude. Did you like it? Nah. Okay, good. I just, I didn't know if you were like at that level of fan where you make yourself like things. Because <laughs> right, because I you're definitely, obsessed for, with it. For, I mean, for that franchise especially, even though there's all that reporting that they're just repurposing shit yeah. to fit into a, a universe yeah. and it makes you kind of hate it because the, the first movie was so good. And yeah. then uh, even, I mean, Cloverfield Lane was dude, amazing. Dude, I loved 10 Cloverfield Lane. Oh, 10 yeah. Cloverfield Lane. Yeah, that was a great fucking movie. John Goodman killed it. Fucking, uh, what's her name? Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Mm -hmm. Amazing. But yeah, dude, that like whatever. What was it called? It was called like, damn, I should the know. Cloverfield Effect. Yeah, or right? Paradox. The oh, Cloverfield yes, Paradox. Yes, yes, yes. Is that what it was called? Holy shit. And they, all they needed to do <laughs> was give you that. the first two minutes of it, of, of that movie. Yeah. Where they go, where someone, I think someone even references like, it could open up another dimension. Yeah. That's the whole fucking movie. And then you yeah. just see it shittily happen. Well, and then it wasn't like, man, it had so many good people in it too, but it was just like a bummer. It was just really like, not. It? Yeah. Cause it had uh goo goo and Batha from, uh, where do we see goo goo? Uh, where's my goo goo? Where do we, where's goo goo from? Someone give me my goo goo Googles. Uh, and then, um, Chris O'Dowd, who's the guy that was from like the it crowd. And, uh, mm. oh, he's yeah. that Irish guy. And uh, I don't know, it had, like, it had a really good cast and then it was like Cloverfield stuff in it, but it seemed real forced and it seemed like they pushed that shit to Netflix real fast. It was meant to be like a theatrical Well, movie. I love that. I love that. Like they were like, how do we get people to do it? Let's just surprise them during the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. Just Which is cool because it is in line with like when JJ originally showed Cloverfield, right? Because it was just like no one knew about it at all. Right. And then the Transformers movie came out. And everyone went to see Transformers. And then the Cloverfield trailer was in the Transformers movie. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't hear about this shit. And then 10 Cloverfield Lane was like. I forgot how they did that one. They did it in a similar way too. The next one is just going to be on your phone. All right. It's just, it. <laughs> it's like the U2 album. What, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? You. Dude, I think Cloverfield's dead though, because really? yeah, because bad robot is with Warner brothers now or something, or okay. I can't, but there was some other studio now, but I, I think that's the end of the Cloverfield franchise, which makes me sad. That's so sad because it, it was so exciting. And they had, and JJ was like, we got big ideas, man. We, we're going in a crazy direction. You better buckle up. And then it's like, nah, never mind. Straight it's all gone. Wall. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck. It makes me sad because like, dude, JJ talked about Cloverfield being like America's Godzilla, you know, it could which be. was kind of ambitious because the monster was cool, but it certainly could have been had they kept doing it yeah. and then just done more big monster movies or something. But I don't know, man. I don't know what happened. What's uh? I mean, it's been a while since we talked. What's your like favorite movie or movies from the past few years? Dude, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, man. Did you love it? Did you I like really it? enjoyed it. It's like it feels like based off of conversations I've had with people. It's it's a somewhat polarizing movie. Yeah. The reactions online have in general been good. I know a lot of people have said that it's it's too long and yeah, I too think, much driving. But I think so, so stupid. I feel like so many of the shots are so interesting, and I think so much of the uh, and the acting is so good. Yeah, that I it didn't bother me, dude. I could watch a whole movie with Leo and that little girl just like talking <laughs> about movie stuff, like that. Those the I mean I don't know, dude. I loved everything, but I love Tarantino, you know. Sure. And the thing is, is like living in L.A. Everyone was talking about how there's too many driving scenes, mm. and it was like, dude, you never get to see L.A. like that, where that you could just zoom through everywhere because there's zero 
zero traffic. You know, it was kind of neat to to see L.A. like that. I like that. That's the reason you like the movie. You're it, like, it, it was added, cool to see. It was cool it. to see L.A. with no traffic. Though. <laughs> that's the only reason why I care. It was nice. To <laughs> it see was like a fantasy. Like an old man. It was nice to see no traffic in L.A. Uh, I also saw it too, chapter two. Oh, you did that yeah, recently, dude. Is I saw. It, I've heard just amazing things about Hater, dude. He steals the whole movie. Really? Yeah, he's incredible. I mean, but was there any? Was there any doubt? It's that he been was awesome kill to see it? him on Barry. Of just dude, being able to see how how dramatic he can be, how <sighs> funny he can be in a he's dark. So manner. good. Yeah, he's just so good, and he just he really kills it in the movie like big time he just he's so good which and one? it's also like terrifying as shit too. Which, which of the new ones which one do you think is better the first one the first one? one yeah oh really definitely yeah so part one part one you know i'm not talking about like the old yeah one. no part one's better yeah chapter one or whatever of the new yeah the, the finn wolf hard one yeah <laughs> <laughs> which dude i didn't know because i was watching chapter two and no spoilers but the kids look exactly like they did in the first one and i was thinking like man, you even watch Stranger Things from like season one to two the and they jump. look so much older. Do you, you think know? they shot them together? I, I guess they de-aged, just de-aged oh, them. Oh, really? Yeah. That but feels like it'd be way harder with a kid. Totally. And I don't think it's ever been done like that. But it was like, it must have been so subtle because, dude, this shit doesn't get past me, man. You can't get this shit past me. This is like, like bad visual effects are bad visual effects, right? Sure, yeah. But like, this was like, it, I had no idea. And when I came out of the movie, I was like, they must have like shot this thing right away, right? Like, cause they all look exactly the same. But no, Joe was like, dude, they de-aged everybody. And there's there's like all these articles about it. It's How crazy. Fascinating. Yeah, I've never seen it. But so it, it, okay, going back to our old scale. Yes. Is oh it, yeah. Is it a, a full price, uh, a matinee, a Netflix, or a <laughs> don't watch? I think that's what it was, right? Yeah, holy shit. Um, this is a, uh, this is a, what was the best one? Wait, are you, a, are you a Warner Brothers partner? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, <laughs> like, dude, no, this was, this was, uh, a definitely go see it in the theater. Like, are you yeah. kidding me? It's a, I mean, it's a horror movie, right? Like you don't want to just, if you watch it at home, it's like cheating. You can pause it and you mm. can like, you got to see this big, you got to see it in a theater. Sure. You got to see, uh, you got to take your more, most scared friends. Have you seen a uh, ready or not yet? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to see it tonight though. Yeah, I snuck out <laughs> yesterday and watched it. It's amazing. And? Yeah, it's I amazing. need to see it. I forget the the name of the the main actress. I know. I thought it was Margot Robbie. <laughs> I really did. I was like, Margot Robbie's in this new movie, and everyone's like, "You idiot! That's not fucking Margot Robbie." How dare you call her that? I, but that was like when people used to say uh, Jesse. Oh fuck! Who did pe some people used to call Jesse Eisenberg the the budget Michael Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> Which is crazy now. Yeah, now that doesn't that doesn't work. But maybe like, back then it did. Well, one, it's crazy in looks, and <laughs> and two, it's crazy just in career path. No offense, oh, Michael. Yeah, Sarah. no, no, totally. Like what? Yeah, no, absolutely. Michael Sarah is like he's one of those guys where he's like, remember when he was like a cute kid and super bad, sure. and then he was like adorable in Arrested Development, and then he got to this age where you're like, no, <laughs> what happened to you? You're weird, but you're still funny, and I love you. But something, something didn't work well from childhood to adulthood. Wait, so what's a Michael what, Sarah? What's a movie in the, the last three years that you you hated? Hated. Or disappointed you? Um, let's so let's just start throwing movies out there. So I loved Infinity War. I loved it. I thought yeah. it was great. I and and like normally I'm like eh, with the I, superhero stuff. Really? Yeah. I mean, I guess it's all the Marvel stuff has been so good though. Yeah. I I loved Captain Marvel. I loved uh, Black Panther. I loved uh, um, Infinity War. The only one that I really oh Ant Man. Was, the Ant Man movies are good too. I was gonna say that I'm like. I'm iffy on them. Those oh, are the, really? Those are the only ones. And I and I get that they're they're supposed to be different. They're very different. Yeah, I know yeah. they're supposed to be different. I think I end up liking them be, just because of Paul Rudd. Yeah. Like he just, he, he carries He really does stuff. mask a lot of stuff yeah. <laughs> because of that. I, I, you know, the first one was supposed to be an Edgar Wright movie. So it makes me kind of mm. sad that it isn't, but it feels close enough to one that I, it made me love it. But I was really surprised by Wasp, Ant-Man and Wasp. Sure, yeah. Cause I mean, like it's just kind of like a comedy caper movie, mm -hmm. sort of. Uh, what did DC put out, dude? Aquaman kind of bummed me out. Really? Yeah, it was fine. I watched the first ten minutes and I was like, I am not gonna be able to do this. It was fine. That's it was okay. I'm trying to think of what what else. I didn't see. I still haven't seen Toy Story four. I still haven't seen John Wick three. 
John Wick 3 is dope. I mean, yeah. you, you kind of know what you're going to get. Yeah. But then it's like more people. Uh, <laughs> it's like, it was like, what if we did the movie, but also uh, weaponized dogs <laughs> and horses, right? I heard oh, he uses yeah, the horse right. as I a weapon. I forgot about the horse. Scene, yeah. <laughs> but the dogs, the dog, like the dog Halle Berry scene goes on it feels like i think it's just five to six <laughs> minutes of just fighting it uh, feels like it's it's almost like uh which kung fu-esque and oh, how shit. long it just continues oh like happening. it's just like okay we have enough of this scene now like that kind of feeling or no i mean i still thoroughly enjoyed it it, it wasn't one of those things where they like hold on to it although i, I don't even mean that in a bad way have, have you ever seen the the raid movies yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. Hell so, like, yeah. I feel like the, that's a great example of like a scene lasting a long time right but it's very it's very fulfilling dude what do you think about the new matrix <laughs> are you excited like we'll are you see. on the keanu train like everyone else is i don't it's not like i dislike keanu reeves yeah. i like that i th one I, i've always heard nothing but good things yeah. about the dude two i think uh He's talented and I think he was prepped for a comeback just because of when people found out not only like the nice stuff that he did, but the bad shit that's happened in his life that I think that fleshed out a, a, a connection with people. Yeah. Um, it, 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 <laughs> I think I was always on it. Like I was never off the Keanu train. I don't think so. I mean, I don't know how you would have, though, because it's like, sure. OK, he came out with the, the, the Matrix trilogy. Mm -hmm. And then I think he did like some he had the baseball movie and. He did like a movie. I don't remember a baseball movie. I remember he did Dracula though. Remember he did Dracula? No. Bram Stoker's Dracula? No. Because I think he went like Bill and Ted, Dracula, and then Matrix. And then he just did like a bunch of like romantic comedies and shit. No, but he's got, he's got like, he's got pretty good range. I, uh, yeah. The Devil's Advocate, I think. Yeah, is, is yeah, yeah. Really, there you go. really, like, yeah. that's like classic Keanu. I think a lot of people think of, uh, Bill and Ted. Yeah, but that's for me, dude. Bill and Ted's my thing. I mean, you even got that new one coming out. But that's, <laughs> <laughs> I think. So maybe he's like he's he's benefiting the most out of he old totally franchises is. coming back. <laughs> yeah, him and uh, Stallone. Do you want to see more Matrix movies though? Like, are you? Are you I don't know what they're that? gonna do. I know because well, weren't they dead or didn't some of them die or something? Yeah, I, I thought know. I thought Trinity died. Wouldn't it be some? Would you be angry if you found out that everything? had still been in the, like the matrix <laughs> would you like lose your fucking mind you'd be like fuck this yeah like, because i'd be like the yeah it would ruin movies. everything from the other movies huh. but i heard that they're like doing like it's it's like a new world like a new continuation of the same like universe but it's like they're navigating like a new computer program type world or something what <laughs> What the fuck does that even mean? Like, you know, they, they got out of the matrix, yeah. but it was like, there, there's like, God, an, I have to go back and remember how <laughs> no, this fucking movie I ended. It too. <laughs> All I remember, like I think of the movie and I'm like, I remember that scene where there was way too many screens. Yeah. Which I think was yeah. multiple scenes. That was the guy. That was like was the that guy that the, ran the matrix. But was that even the last one? I think that might've been the second one. Like we saw a little bit of the screen room in the second one, and then we saw more of it in the third I one. Don't remember. Wasn't there like werewolves or something too? What are you talking about? Or like they about? mentioned werewolves because they were talking about how like there were endless so possibilities. The, so the next movie is they're gonna free the werewolves. <laughs> I didn't know has to is. fight the werewolves. <laughs> <laughs> I've just I don't know how this many years later you could add to the story. I I but here's the thing. I'm more than happy yeah. to be surprised and just like in awe of yeah. this thing. But I don't know. It's I, I feel like it's also one of those movies that I need to go back and watch and see if it. Have you watched? The I ones? have not. I need to rewatch. It's them. one of those things where it's like, all right, does it hold up? I know because those visual effects were pretty great when we were kids. But but I, I also I also feel like I'm a lot more. Uh, I, I don't want to minimize people that actually have <laughs> like uh, AD, that that are ADD attention spans. Yeah, yeah. but it's. Even recently, I realized, oh, shit, I've never actually seen True Romance. Oh, shit. Yeah. And I was like, I got to watch this movie. I could not get through the first 10 minutes yeah. because it, I know that it's it's all build up to like craziness. Just it's starts from happening. a time that like if you didn't watch it when it came out, it's kind of like the whole like. Oh, you think that one? It wouldn't. Hold I mean, I much. don't know. I, th there's a lot of people that like have never seen The Princess Bride. 
And then they finally see, see I'd be it. scared to go back to see that one, especially like the first third of the movie. Right? Because it's like such an ingrained like thing in your memory in your childhood. And then people watch it who have never seen it. It's the same with Goonies. People who have never seen mm, Goonies yeah. watch Goonies and they go like, it's okay. <laughs> and it's like, whoa, dude. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe don't see it then. Do you, think, do you think that's just a changing of the time or you think that movies or methods have just gotten better? I think it is a little of both because when I think of old movies, I think of static wide shots. Yeah. Rather than something that that's like kind of handheld and rougher yeah. and a little grittier. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, yeah, I think there's a look too that just feels old and you can see mm -hmm. like, like uh, some, when Will would come over, I would try to show him like film school movies. Like I tried showing him uh, like Stargate or something, you know, like that's oh, an wow. old yeah, yeah, classic, yeah, yeah. right? And he's just like, this movie looks old. What is this, 1970? <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit. This was like 92 maybe. <laughs> this was like- Are you talking about like when it was on HBO? Yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's like, he's just looking at it like, this is old and gross. And I think there's just like a time where once you get past that, like that look of like a, like an early nineties, like, you know, you watch a movie like hackers now uh -huh. and you're just like, this looks bad. This isn't good. I think the same thing will happen with the matrix for us. We'll just be like, Oh man, why did we like this? I'm going to, I'm going to start on the, the first one tonight. Yeah. Same. I mean, I won't it. tonight, but I'll watch it soon <laughs> and I won't tonight like you, but I'll try. I won't go with you <laughs> yeah. unless I'm invited. Yeah, yeah, ah. exactly. <laughs> Fine, I'm coming over. Steve, I always ask this when, when we're about to end things. Okay. If you, if you can leave the audience with one thing, what would it be? Hopefully, hopefully it makes either life better, more bearable in your experience. Wow. Something. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's a cliche thing, but... Don't, don't sweat the small stuff. Life is very short and everyone says it, but just, uh, you know, if some, if something angers you, just let it go, man. It don't matter. You got more important things to do. Let the small stuff just sweat right off, baby. What do you think qualifies as the small stuff? Anything that's like manageable and isn't the end of the world type shit. Like, oh, my uh, my car has the check engine light on. It's ruining my life. I can't get my shit together. Like, no, nah, dude, just like, don't worry about it. Fix it when you can. <laughs> I thought you were just leaving it. Don't worry about no, it. No, leave it. Yeah. I was like, no, you should probably. Drive across the country with it. <laughs> Ignore don't, it. Don't sweat the small stuff so that it becomes the big stuff. Yeah, Steve here's my, Zarago is Actually, it. here's my actual advice. Ignore your check engine light on your car. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a prop. It's just it's just a yeah. thing to get you in there so they can fuck you. Yeah, it's how they get money out of you at the gas places. They just it's just an egg timer with a yeah. different face. Thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs>